Peace family. My name is Vicki Dillard for African Diaspora's channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to give us a big thumbs up, thumbs up and share the broadcast. Also, family, did you know we have an app? Yes, you heard that right. African Diaspora's channel. We have our own app. Beloved, be sure to download it. I think you're going to love it. It's with excellence. Of course, you all know we give you the best content. Uh, topics and subjects that speak for you. And it's so important that you support folks uh, like us because uh, we help to extend uh, and expand the unified Black voice around the world. Thank you so very much, family. Certainly some of you all have heard about President Biden's recent State of the Union address, uh, which was an absolute catastrophe. Uh, if you ask me, of course, he's been having so many troubles with you know cognitive issues. And certainly we have seen it on display repeatedly. And of course, it causes concerns because this man has the nuclear codes. And it is clear that he is not making the decisions that's going on in the U.S. government, which means that there is a shadow government at work. Talk black to me, somebody. Nevertheless, he, during his State of the Union address, called those that broke federal law to get here illegals. Well, he turned around and apologized in this interview but I want you to pay close attention to something else that he said in the context of this. Watch this clip. And I shouldn't have used the legal. I should have, it's undocumented. And look, when I spoke about the difference between Trump and me, one of the things I talked about on the border was that his the way he talks about vermin, the way he talks about these people polluting the blood. I talked about what I'm not going to do, what I won't do. I'm not going to treat any, any, any of these people with disrespect. Look, they built the country. The reason our economy is growing, we have to control the border and, and more orderly flow, but I, I don't share his view at all. OK, first of all, you all know that when black folks commit some petty crime out of desperation to feed their family and never do it again and regret ever doing it, the U.S. government doesn't come up with fluffy names like calling us dreamers or apologizing uh, for calling people that did something illegal, illegal. Talk black to me, somebody. Well, I want you to notice that he gave credit for the building of America to migrants. He said they are the reason the economy is doing good. Family, I love to quote from this mini book called How White Folks Got So Rich. You can read it in your lunch, on lunch break. It, go, it gives us information about how the United States, not only through chattel slavery, convict leasing, Jim Crow and new Jim Crow, oppressed and enslaved us, but they give so many examples of, for example, the Indian land grab, which of course affected us, had rights, um, land giveaways that were given to whites, Jefferson's uh, so-called uh, curse, the slavery, the most profitable, profitable business of all time. Of course, we know that from cotton to oil, given the history of that and how the United States used these different laws and codifications and rules to benefit from our free labor. Uh, of course, the sharecropping, predatory lending, debt slavery, talking about the labor unions, family, white domestic terrorism, the compromise of 1877, the Asian Exclusion Acts, and give the history of that now that's interconnected to us. Citizenship and immigration, uh, talking about Plessy versus Ferguson, uh, talking about Woodrow Wilson, the president of white supremacy, discussing uh, the fourth R, which is, of course, uh, racism, student debt, stock market, subprime loans, sundown towns, Homestead Act, Farmers Home Administration, uh, 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 which is the FHA, the public housing, federal housing administration, which is also FHA, the black tax, Social Security and pensions, unemployment insurance, the National Recovery Act, known as the NRA, the Great Depression's Negro Removal Act, minimum wage, homeowners loan, corporation, and so much more. Our oppression was codified in law in the past, present, and now. For one small portion, or we'll be here all day, proving how absolutely wrong that is to credit migrants for the building of America. I'm going to sum it up. If you would be patient with me, and I know I'm talking to some intelligent black people, yes. This section of the books, page 22, says slavery is the most profitable business of all time. Everything in the Western world, its cities, institutions, and wealth, is built on the profits of black slavery. Paris, Rome, Amsterdam, Seville, Lisbon, London, New York, name the place. And its riches are the spoils of the greatest criminal endeavor in the history 
of the universe. If all the books were ever written were dedicated solely to the subject, they could only begin, they could only begin to elaborate on the dreadful fact. According to leading sociologist Joseph R. Fegan, he says, quote, y'all listen, the sum total of the worth of all the black labor stolen by the whites through the means of legal slavery, legal segregation, and contemporary racial discrimination is truly staggering, perhaps in the range of five to 24 trillion with the T. Black labor was believed to be so essential to Western advancement that whites built thousands of ships over hundreds of years, selling them thousands of miles over treacherous oceans, instigating brutal wars for the capture of indigenous Africans, bringing those kidnapped victims back thousands of miles to the Americans to be sold in the open market for the purposes or for the purpose of forcing lifelong labor from them and their descendants forever and ever. Talks about this close reading of a newspaper advertisement placed by American slave traders reveals that blacks were skilled artisans, craftsmen at the highest level. Slave trade ads placed in American newspapers show the casual selling of Africans with skills as engineers, carpenters, Cowboys, shipbuilders, mechanics, stonemasons, blacksmiths, seamstresses, herbalists, weavers, shoemakers, chefs. Black slave labor built America's infrastructure, including, listen good, its buildings, roads, bridges, and railways, just as they had built the pyramids in Egypt thousands of years before, and then gave civilization to the European. Black slaves built the stately mansions at great Southern plantations and the grand churches and synagogues all over America. And they built the quote, president's house and the Capitol in Washington, DC. Whatever might be credited to white labor was nonetheless financed by profits from cotton, sugar, tobacco crops, all made possible by African slave labor. There are many pages small pages in this book, but that pretty well sums up the lie that the president just told debunking it. Of course, we admit that later the United States government brought on others, brought in others to help with the railways and the infrastructure of the US government, but we're its foundation and its sustainer. And you haven't paid us one red cent. Can't wait to hear what you have to say about it. My name is Vicki Dillard. Beloved, be sure to comment below and, of course, be sure to share the broadcast here from African Diaspora News Channel. I hope that you would also subscribe to my channel at VickiDillard.tv. That's VickiDillard.tv. I can't wait to see you again.